Hi, I'm Rev. Carol Saunders, host of The Spiritual Forum. I'm here with a lot of interesting people who are consciously walking the spiritual path, experiencing and expressing the divine in unique ways and through unique lenses. Everyone here has wisdom to share and an interesting story to tell, all to inspire you on your spiritual path. Welcome to The Forum. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spiritual Forum. I'm so glad you're here. I am coming off the high of my whole planet spirituality forum and retreat. The theme was Peace Begins With Me, and it was held last weekend at Unity Village for three and a half days. And boy, did we have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Unbelievable. The weather was in the uh, 70s. We had sunshine. The Unity grounds are gorgeous. The trees turned color while we were there. The roses were in bloom and the fountains were on. And it was just this divine intersection of perfection. And we had wonderful people come. About 45 people came and about 17 joined us virtually. And what I want to do today, this is a solo cast, just like last year, I'm going to summarize the presentation that I gave. I usually start off this event by setting the groundwork and talking about what the theme is. And around this theme is what we do inner work with. We do some group work and we do inner work and and grow ourselves. One thing that was fabulous about this event was many people went away saying that their life was changed. And I love seeing that because that means either they awaken to something or they learn something that they didn't know before, or they're going off into the world with a commitment to a new behavior, a new habit, a new focus. And how wonderful that is to be able to bring people to a beautiful place and create a sacred space for growth and connection and collaboration. So the theme was Peace Begins With Me. And I want to talk a little bit about why I picked that theme. First of all, I notice a lot in the world, which means it also exists in me, (laughs) because everyone's projecting their shadow. But so many people talk about peace, and they talk about wanting peace, and they talk about wanting a more peaceful world. But in their own lives, they aren't really doing a lot about it. That are living lives that are confused, that are dissonant, that have a lot of discord, that have a lot of anger and argument and upset and projection on others. And so I, like in my church days, I would notice that people would sing the peace song, which is let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And then I'd see them go off into the parking lot and gossip or maybe go out onto the roads and cut people off and get angry or or often the potluck after church was really anything but peace, that all those foods were put on their plates in a very violent way. And so there's kind of a disconnect there between wanting to be peaceful and thinking you're peaceful and living peacefully. I also noticed that in the freedom movement, that there's a lot of people who want freedom, but they don't want to give freedom to everyone. Maybe kind of like uh, a southern plantation owner wanting to be free while he is also enslaving human beings on his plantation. How are we going to have freedom as long as we're enslaving any others? And so that's just a real disconnect that I see in people. And I think that when we have these disconnects, that what happens is we don't experience our inner peace. Another example would be people who are all about love and compassion and, you know, the vegan movement that all love animals, but they hate people. And it's like, okay, how can you be about love as long as you hate some segment of the population? So these are just three examples of where I see peace not happening within people because they have this inner dissonance, this inner discord. They're not lined up. And we're going to be talking about that in a minute. But that's the reason why I picked this theme. And isn't it interesting that this gathering happened 
But at the same time that this horrific violence was happening in the Middle East, and now there's this war burgeoning there, and then we have the Ukraine-Russia thing going on, and we have people that are upset about each other here in the United States, and we have all these groups and factions and dislike for the other. It's all over the place. And if there's ever been a call to peace, now is the time. So where does peace begin? It begins with us, and we can't have peace out there unless we have inner peace. So that was why I picked this theme. So just to remind everyone, peace is an internal state. And if we want peace, we have to learn how to be peace in every aspect of our lives. So when we look out and we see all this horrific nonsense, this war and these class wars and these gender wars and these political wars, it's really just an outpicturing of where we are in consciousness individually and collectively. Because, you know, what we see in the world is really an outpicturing of what we are. So I, I ask you all who are listening, you know, do you experience peace inside you? And, and when you don't, what does it feel like and what's going on? Because sometimes what we do when we're faced with something that is upsetting is we don't experience peace in the face of something upsetting. What we do is we either numb ourselves out, avoid, we don't actually look at what's there, or we allow the feelings to come in, but it's uncontrollable and we allow this violence to just arise in us and we are angry and we're projecting and we're creating a lot of dissonance in in our lives so we can't be peaceful inside if we're avoiding numbing ourselves out or allowing violence to rise within us and a real test of peace is looking at our relationships you know are they at peace we don't have to get along we don't have to like each other we don't we we don't have to agree with each other but can we be in a state of peace with other people with whom we're in relationship. And then another question is, do you allow all the others you share the planet with to live in peace? I mentioned the freedom people who are, are okay with en enslaving others as long as it's not them. And yes, I am referring to other species. But if we want to be in peace, we need to allow everyone to live in peace and to not be constantly wreaking havoc with anybody else. And I think this is a really important point because people just don't get that it is all connected. It's all connected. It's not like you can be kind to one group of people and be unkind to other groups of people and expect kindness to pervade the world. Similar with peace, you can't be peaceful with one kind of people and, and violent with others and expect peace to pervade throughout all the world. And it's the same with species. We can't want peace, freedom, love, harmony, joy for ourselves while we are enslaving and exploiting others. And that's what we do with basically with the animal kingdom. And then are you content with who you are and how you show up? Because I think a lot of us have a lot of discontent with ourselves. We expect ourselves to be better, smarter, prettier, handsomer, richer, whatever. And, and we're unhappy with how we show up. And so that causes us to not be at peace. And really what this talk is about and what my forum and retreat was about is calling us forward to live as peacemakers and looking at what work do we need to accomplish? What inner work do we need to accomplish in order to more closely approach that of a peacemaker? I think, what was it that Jesus said? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, sons and daughters of God. So peace is a reflection of the Creator. Now, I want to point out something that you may or may not be aware of. It's called David Hawkins' Scale of Consciousness. And I really will try my best to describe it in this audio version. I'm not doing video <laughs> on this one. Um, 
but I will put this in the show notes. So David Hawkins was a, a psychologist and he did a lot of research over two decades on the energies associated with various emotions. And he wrote this book called Power Versus Force. And I don't really want to get into all the details about how he created his model. I know there's some controversy over it. He used kinesiology and I'm not going to ask anyone to buy into all of his methods. I'm just asking you to consider this model as an interesting model that depicts the consciousness on the planet. And it's basically a logarithmic scale, which has 17 levels of consciousness. And let me read them from the bottom to the top. Shame, guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, pride. Those are all the levels at what he calls force consciousness. And then when you step into power consciousness, it's courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, peace, and right after peace is enlightenment. And so peace is very, very, very high on this scale. So the idea is that we are each at a certain level of consciousness. And yes, of course, we go through different energies during the day. Sometimes we may feel guilt or grief or fear, but that's not where we dwell. And so this certain level of consciousness that we would be at is really basically where we dwell. And, and the interesting thing is, and I think that this is probably very true, is that the lower levels, the lower levels represent 80% of humanity. So that's living in shame and guilt and fear and desire and pride. And in this space, people are overcome by negative emotions and the world is happening to them. They're victims. And they, there's a belief that the outside world and their current situation is fixed. They can do nothing about it. So kind of stewing in just this apathy, guilt, shame, fear, we see it pretty much everywhere. Things are the way they are for this group of people, and they're besieged with destructive forces instead of constructive power. So 80% of the world is at that level of consciousness, victim consciousness. And so the response is force, and we see this. We see it when, when people are um, fractured and not reaching across the aisle and hating the others and feeling separate, dwelling in shame and guilt. And when you're in shame and guilt, you experience that and you project it out onto others. And it's just fascinating that this is the world that we live in. So if we're trying to bring peace to this world, it looks kind of hopeless because, because the world is comprised of 80% of people who aren't even close. But that's not the idea. Peace is not about making others be peaceful. Peace is not about making others grow in consciousness. Peace is an inner state that regardless of what the world is comprised of, we sit in our own state of peace. Now, in the middle levels, I think I mentioned when you move up from pride to courage, when you start moving up to courage, then now you have some leverage in your life. And when you start moving into these middle levels, which is courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, you start to believe that you create your own reality. You start to become more aware of your negative thoughts. And you start to realize, I can change myself. I can change my situation. I have some power. I have some agility in this world. And with that sense of power and agility comes hope. And so that's really the middle levels. And then the higher levels are, I mean, this is the upper, upper echelons of consciousness that most of us don't even know people who are at. But that's where, where a person lets go of all the attachments and realizes that divine energy infuses them. And so a person at these higher levels, peace, joy, love, they, they realize that who we really are is divine. And we live surrendered to the divine. And so those are the levels of consciousness. And if you reach peace, which is just short of enlightenment, 
You represent one in 10 million people, according to David Hawkins. So there aren't a lot of people walking around at this peace level. But the whole point of this is that our lives give us the opportunities to grow in consciousness, to move up from these lower levels of guilt and shame that keep us so rooted in victimization, and to move up through courage and neutrality, and then eventually get to this experience of unconditional love and inner peace. So to me, this looks like the soul journey, and we probably go through lots and lots of lifetimes to get to these higher levels. But I think this model serves a really important function to help us identify like where we are and where we are growing towards. Now, according to David Hawkins, it's a logarithmic scale. And so one person who is at that highest level of enlightenment counterbalances 70 million who are at those lower levels, the 80% of the world who are in guilt, shame, and pride, and anger, and desire. One person who reaches the level of peach, peace counterbalances 10 million people in those lower levels. One person, unconditional love, counterbalances 70, 750,000 people at those lower levels. And one person who moves beyond courage and, and, and becomes willing to the divine counterbalances 90,000 below in those lower levels. So the point here is, and I'm not here to say these numbers are absolutely true or these numbers are provable, but I think it's a fascinating idea that as you rise in consciousness, your energy counterbalances so much more than just another person. So it's another reason that it's really important for us to be committed to rising in consciousness and rising towards this place of peace within. So just as an aside, <laughs> David Hawkins says that a, a dog's wagging tail and a cat's purr calibrates at, at uh, the unconditional love uh, level, which I'm not sure exactly how he knows that, but I think it's interesting to think that some of our animals are really expressing complete love while we're still stuck in, in judgment and pride and all that kind of stuff. So... Coming back to inner peace at the retreat, I encourage people to look at where they are in consciousness and also consider where they are in developing this peace because here are just a few what I consider passages to peace. For us to move up towards that level of peace on the scale, we first need to remember our authentic nature and Gosh, how many times have I said this on our podcast? If we just knew that we were divine beings, everything would shift in a moment. Everything. And we would be completely free and have complete agency to create beauty and, and love and wonder and splendor. So remembering authentic nature in this world that wants to constantly convince us otherwise is one of the passages to peace. And I talk about division too, all the divisions in this world. And I don't know if it's just happening naturally. To me, it really looks like, gosh, it really looks like there are forces out there that want to divide us. Some of these divisions just seem so arbitrary and they come up so suddenly. And now we're faced with this division over the, the war in the Middle East. And I think it's really important to be willing to reach across the aisle and, and try our best to use empathy and understanding and, and, and refuse to be divided. Just don't play that division game. Release the need to be right and to take sides because that's a huge block to peace, this need to be right. How can any of us be right? I know all of us think we're right. I, I, I research so much, so of course I think I have the right handle on things. And then, because my prayer is, God, show me what I cannot yet see, I'll be shown something else. And I'll go, well, holy cow, I was wrong before. I thought I was so right. So just whatever you think you're right about, just kind of release that grip on that rightness and, and this need to take sides. Do you feel like you need to side with Israel or Palestine? And, and why? What is driving that? So just release that a little bit and allow the peace to creep back into your psyche. I think uh, one way to 
find the passage of peace is to be willing to love the haters. We, it's very popular now to hate haters and say that it's okay to hate haters because haters deserve hate. It's like that is so ridiculously circular and it's contrived to, to keep you at these lower levels of consciousness so that you're down there not feeling that you have ability and creativity. It's, it's a clever ploy to get people to say, it's okay to silence people who are lying. It's okay to hate the haters. They all deserve it. You know, it's like, no, no, no. You want to feel peace? You want to experience peace? You got to love everyone. It's also uh, important to be present with reality, to not avoid what is real, what is true. Because if you're sitting around, you know, oh, la-di-da, I'm feeling so peaceful. I'm feeling so comfortable. Oh my gosh, I am so great. I love life. I'm feeling so peaceful. And, and you're in that state because you've completely avoided what's actually happening. It's, it's not that different than looking upon a person in need and saying, I refuse to see you because you're going to mess with my peace. No, we have to look at what is real. It is so important. If we want to experience real peace, not fake peace because we've cut ourselves off from reality, but real peace where we steer reality directly in the face. And in that space, we're still able to feel peace. That's what we're after. Oh, gosh, another passage to peace is to notice when you're projecting, you know, when you're angry at that person and we're seeing that they're wrong and I'm right, when we're seeing that they're evil and I'm, I'm good. Really important to engage in that shadow inquiry, another real theme of this podcast. Because if we're avoiding our shadows and <laughs> we're in spiritual bypass and we think we're at peace, but we're not. Releasing anger and engaging in regular spiritual practice that builds faith and trust. Those are some passages to peace. And then the last one is to become aware of your personal incongruities. And this is kind of what I alluded to in the beginning when I talked about why I named this retreat Peace Begins With Me because I see all these incongruities within people. And of course, because I see it within people, it must be within me, right? But this is where our values and our words and our actions just barely overlap. So if you just picture a Venn diagram where one circles values and another is words and another is actions, that there's just a little point in the center where our values, words, and actions are in alignment. And I believe that peace is equivalent to congruence between our values, words, and actions. And, and the intersections of that should be the entire circle. And this is when we're living in integrity. When we, we look at our values, we speak our values, and we act our values. And I just invite you to look at this and watch yourself. And watch like when you're speaking out of alignment with your values. When you believe in one thing, but say something else, why would you do that? Well, perhaps you're in a social situation. Everyone else has another conversation going. Um, perhaps you don't feel strong enough to speak in accordance with your values and beliefs. I know as a, a animal activist, it, it's hard for me to speak my values in a lot of settings because the rest of the world has different values. And so I discern when it is a good idea for me to speak and when it's a good idea for me to remain silent. But if I remain silent, I always feel kind of bad inside that I didn't speak. And so that's another incongruity when we're not speaking what we believe. So speaking out of alignment with our values or not speaking in alignment with our values are ways that we have these incongruities and it causes inner dissonance. So even if we look peaceful on the outside, there's this kind of growling inside going on because we're not aligned. A couple more examples of incongruities and being out of integrity is not taking action in line with your values. I mean, to be honest with you, when I look at my life and I look at the times where I'm most disappointed in myself, and I can spot the day and I can spot the time and almost even the sun angle, it's that clear to me. When I didn't take action in line with my values, those are the things that I most regret in my life. 
And I don't want to dwell in the shame and the guilt and all that kind of stuff that brings me down into a lower level of consciousness. It turns me to go, I'm not doing that again. I will always take action in line with my values or at least strive to. Because I know there are some situations, you know, humans are social animals and there's some situations that we get in where it really takes a great amount of divine strength and thank God we have this strength to take action in line with our values when everyone else has different values and they're taking other actions. And I think also what just came to my mind was there's a famous photograph at a Hitler rally where everybody has the Heil sign up and there's one man who's just standing there with his arms crossed. And, I mean, he's in a sea of thousands of people who are going along with the rhetoric. And, boy, it is easy to do that in a crowd. And I think we saw a lot of that happening in the COVID years where people were kind of going along with their crowd, whichever side of the issue they were on. But not taking in line with your values causes inner dissonance. And then the other is taking action not in line with your values. And, oh boy, people are forced to do this all the time. I think people who are sent to war, nobody wants to kill people and nobody wants to harm people. And they're put in this horrific situation where they have to take action that's not in line with who they are. And th those are some fairly extreme examples, but I invite you to look at your life and look at your values. What are they? You know, do you value connection? Do you value love? Do you value peace? Do you value nonviolence? Do you value family? And, and how are your words supporting your values and how are you acting? I mean, just look at the family situation. A lot of people say they value their family, but they make fun of their family and they even may harm their family. So, you know, these are the kind of things that really keep us in a state of inner dissonance, inner violence, I would even say. So our inner work is to identify these incongruities, our beliefs, words, and actions need to be in alignment in all areas. And that's our goal. That's our spiritual goal. That's what we're walking towards as we live this life and any future life. And wherever we're out of alignment, we need to pause and notice it and investigate why. Why did I not speak? Why did I act that way? What do I really value? Maybe I don't value love and peace. Maybe I I value disconnection, and I need to be honest with myself. Could, could be possible. And, and when we establish alignment, though, then we're moving into that level of courage that I spoke about in David Hawkins' scale of consciousness, that stepping over the line, I have courage now. I have courage to change. I have courage to, to create my world. And, and I think as we get closer, to this inner alignment that we can practice peace internally, love ourselves, make sure we're in alignment with our values as we look upon ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, care for ourselves, love ourselves, live our values, speak our values. We practice peace internally, and then we are able to bring our peace to everyone. So that is generally the message that I had at my Whole Planet Spirituality Retreat. And as I mentioned, I think it's just fascinating that this retreat happened when the world was in such a state of violence and chaos. One last thing before I close, I also did a, a short presentation on a woman who was born Mildred Lisette Norman in 1908. She was born in Egg Harbor, New Jersey, and she was born on a poultry farm. And she is known in history as Peace Pilgrim. That's the name that she took on. And she's just a, a, an exemplar. I, I consider Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, who I spoke about a year ago after the retreat. They are the co-founders of Unity, and they lived their lives in alignment. Their words their values and their actions were in alignment. And it was just amazing, amazing, amazing people. And I think the Peace Pilgrim was also someone who I would consider an exemplar. And at some point in her 
life, she had some sort of direct mystical experience and she experienced the love of the creator and it, it spurred her to then take on this decades long walking journey for peace. And she walked penniless across the United States six and a half times and she didn't own anything. The, the shirt on her back said, Peace Pilgrim. Then her purpose was to awaken the world to our common humanity and to our spiritual potential. She did this for 28 years. Now, I don't think everyone is called to do this, but she was. And it was fascinating because she had no organizational background. She didn't have a GoFundMe. She carried no money. And wherever she went, she wouldn't even ask for shelter or food. If it was offered to her, she would take it, but she didn't even ask for it. It was such an interesting, interesting demonstration of faith and trust in the divine, just knowing that you'd be supplied, but not making that demand on anyone. And I just want to just read a few quotes. Uh, she was a great teacher. She's a great teacher of peace. And she would even go to universities and be invited in to, to speak about her life. And here's just a few quotes, just to give you an idea. With me, I carry always my peace message. This is the way of peace. It's so simple. Overcome evil with good, falsehood with truth, and hatred with love. Then she goes on to say there's nothing new about this message except the practice of it. And the practice of it is required not only in the international situation, but also in the personal situations. I believe that the situation in the world is a reflection of our own immaturity. If we were mature, harmonious people, war would be no problem whatever. It would be impossible. See, she's saying the same things I just said, or maybe I'm saying the same thing she said. <laughs> she came before me. If we were mature, harmonious people, war would be no problem. And what we see is kind of who we are. So as we mature, we will grow out of such things. But as long as we continue to engage in these things, we're going to be fueling violence. And I, I just encourage everyone who's listening to to not play, you know, we've got to create another world. We've got to stop playing on this same board game where it's war and debt and hate and divide. It's kind of old and it's really, really not original. It's boring, but we keep getting sucked into it because you killed my grandma or you hurt my dad or whatever. And we keep getting sucked into it. And are we going to do that again this time with this war in the Middle East and the Ukraine war? And, and I really invite your thoughts on this. So please email me at revcarolsaunders at gmail.com or find the contact me page on the spiritualform.org. I'd, I'd love to be in conversation with you on this. And this is basically what the fundamental premise of my retreat was. Here's some more quotes from Peace Pilgrim. To attain inner peace, you must actually give your life, not just your possessions. When you at last give your life, bringing into alignment your beliefs and the way you live, then and only then can you begin to find peace. Mm, inner alignment again. And she says, when you find peace within yourself, you become the kind of person who can live at peace with others. And if you want to make peace, you must be peaceful. So those are some great quotes from the Peace Pilgrim. She was a fascinating woman. I encourage you to go to the website. I think it's peacepilgrim.org. There's a lot of photographs, a lot of interesting history there. She was really kind of an exemplar of having uh, values, words, and actions in alignment and living in this 100% trust of the divine. Interestingly, similar to the Fillmores, who I also considered exemplars, she gave up flesh. I'm going to throw this out there. I know this is not popular with a lot of people out there, but honestly, I'm just going to ask you, just ask you this question. How will we ever have peace as long as we are dominating and exploiting any other? I mean, we're all connected. We live in the law of cause and effect, the law of compensation. What we do to others will come back to us. And I think we're kind of seeing this happening in our world as there's more levels of control taking hold of the human population. So give that some thought. You know, is it time for you to release exploiting others? And we all do it. I, I do it. I'm sure some of the clothes I buy are based on exploitation and I can't live without harming something. But 
just to be in action to stop participating in the violence towards any other animal, human. It, we, it's just it's just something that we need to be in evolution towards. So here's some of her quotes regarding that. This is a peace pilgrim. I have not eaten flesh for many years, not meat or fish or fowl. I have learned since that it is bad for your health. But at that time, I just extended my love to include not only all my fellow human beings, but also my fellow creatures. And so I stopped hurting them and I stopped eating them. Then she goes on to say, Then I learned that it takes many times the land to raise the creatures we eat as it would to raise fruits or vegetables or grains. Since I want the maximum number of God's children to be fed, that would also make me a vegetarian. And I think if she was more aware of the impact of dairy and eggs, she would definitely be vegan in today's world. But a lot of people didn't know about that back then. And lastly, she says, I think most pacifists, in fact, most human beings, would not eat flesh if they had to kill the creatures themselves. And I think that's true. I don't think, I mean, certainly our inner child doesn't crave the knife to slit the throat of any being. I don't think it's in our nature. I think we've been taught that over hundreds of thousands of years of conditioning. So thank you for listening. I, I want to leave you all with the idea of looking at yourself, recognizing that peace is an inner state and that if we want peace in this very, very non-peaceful violent world that we must learn to be peace ourselves and that what we see out there is an outpicturing of our own consciousness and coming back to david hawkins scale of consciousness and i'll have a a link to that if not a diagram in the show notes that every day we have the opportunity to rise in consciousness from those lower levels where 80 percent of the world is those lower levels of guilt and shame and fear and desire and anger to, to courage and acceptance and love and joy and peace. And that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We're here to grow. We're here to change. And I think we're here to bring peace on earth, to bring God's kingdom on earth, and to bring love to this planet. So thank you for listening. I'm so looking forward to next year's retreat. I think I mentioned that so many people said their life changed during this retreat. And the next one is October 17th through the 20th, 2024. It's at Unity Village, which is in Missouri. And I know it's a strange place to hold such a thing, but why not have consciousness expanding in the heart of our nation? And it just really is some beautiful grounds and very, very sacred space because prayer has been happening 24 hours a day, seven days a week for like 135 years. And so you can just kind of feel the energy there. And we have fabulous plant-based organic food and lots of time for connection and collaboration. And everyone is welcome. Everyone is loved there. So I hope you consider joining me next year in person or virtually. And it's a ministry that I've been called forth to do. It's Spirits asked me to do this. And I said yes. So uh, you can learn more about it at the spiritualforum.org slash retreat. And I just want to bless you all for listening, those who've hung on this long. May peace be with you. May peace be upon you. And may you experience peace even in the darkest storms, even in the craziest of times. And even when it looks like there may not be hope, that you experience peace. Because in truth, in essence, there is always hope. And it's you who will be called forward in consciousness to bring peace to this world. Namaste, everyone. And I now close the spiritual forum. Thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, you can let me know by leaving a positive rating and review on your favorite podcast app or make a tax-deductible donation at thespiritualforum.org. The Spiritual Forum is a podcast, prayer, and retreat ministry affiliated with Unity Worldwide Ministries. Thank you again for being a part of the Spiritual Forum community. And remember, you are an amazing, divine, and powerful being.